author Donna J. Johnhen presents The Christmas Box Set Number 2. If you have not yet listened to Donna's 12 Days of Christmas Box Set Number 1, then you owe it to yourself to do so. This box set is made of 12 wonderful stories for the Christmas holiday season. They are all filled with mystery, suspense, and they all have happy endings. Now, Donna presents her second 12 Days of Christmas box set, 12 stories with wild imaginings. Donna paints pictures of hope, peace, and a bright future for the world. She develops amazing stories that will warm and thrill the hearts of the listener. Sit back now and enjoy Donna's 12 stories. You can email your thoughts and feedback to Donna at donnajothan at gmail.com. Merry Christmas and happy holidays to everyone. Ho, 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 everybody, and I'm Donna J. Jodhan, also known as Detective DJ and author Donna Jodhan. Hey, it's the holiday time, everybody, and it's time to share our joy, our love, our peace. Greet each other, share with each other. We're living in a very troubled world, and now what we need to do is to do our best to make this world as bearable as we can. And my way of doing this is to write and produce Christmas stories which bring hope, love, joy and peace to my listeners. I have already done five of my episodes and I'm about ready to do my sixth episode. So let me list for you the episodes that I have done already. So the first episode was called Santa's Special Christmas Sleigh and the second was called The Presents Christmas Packages. The third was called Santa's Super Christmas Kids. The fourth was called Santa's Magic Marvels. The fifth was called The Presents Christmas Ice Palace. And now it's time for me to share with you by six episodes. Okay, and I hope you enjoy it. It is called Santa's Super Christmas Dream. Here is a description. Before this year, Santa has told his wife that he is going to do his best to bring peace to this world. Or, as he puts it, he is going to give it his best try. Santa enlists his family to help him out. And together, everybody works to do their best to accomplish this very, very important mission. And they find people to assist with this mission. And they all work together in very interesting ways to do this. Find out how Santa goes about his business, bringing peace to the various parts of the world. And his super Christmas soldiers help out and they engage in very dangerous missions in order to accomplish this initiative. All right, part one, Santa's dream. For several years now, Santa has shared his dream with Mrs. Claus. Santa has always wanted to help bring peace to this world and to make this a Christmas gift. However, he is not too sure as to how to go about doing this. He has several ideas floating around in his mind and For the most part, he has kept these to himself as he does not want to spoil his dream. And not even Mrs. Claus knows about these ideas. But wait, Santa has shared his ideas with two very important folks, his two very loyal retrievers, Yelly and Hamish. One thing that Santa has realized 
is that he finds it so relaxing to dream, but he needs to be in the right place at the right time in order to do this. And more often than not, his deep dreams lead to a reality. And it is a reality that comes true. Over the past few months, Santa has been forced to take things easy. Doctor's orders need to be followed completely. If Santa is expected to make a full recovery. So, Santa has had some accidents to deal with, such as a broken leg and a broken back. Then he contracted a wicked dose of COVID and had to be hospitalized. Mrs. Claus really believes that it would not hurt Santa to have a nice long dream. So she goes about making this happen. First, she ensures that Santa is in a very relaxed frame of mind. He, she makes sure that he does not receive too many phone calls and that he does not read too many letters. She encourages Santa to play his piano, to take singing lessons from Rudolph and the other reindeer, and to play chess against Sandy Claus, his brother, through FaceTime, and with her face-to-face -face as well. Mrs. Claus takes over business, and soon things start to roll. Santa's dear friends, Marco and Nicholas, take charge of managing Santa's phone lines and his emails and they also take charge of his security line team. His elves and helpers have everything in hand for this year's Christmas and his kids who he adopted a few years ago are on the ball with their training and their schooling. Rudolph and the reindeer, they know what they need to be doing. And Santa's special team of messengers, reindeer Frosty and Misty, dolphins CJ and Sequin, lambs Rainbow and Raindrop, and snowbirds Snowcone and Snowflake have all been assigned their respective tasks. Even Santa's top secret mermaids, Jamie and Mallory, who you met before, are on the ball as well, making sure that their boss is not disturbed unnecessarily. And on an early spring day, Mrs. Claus puts things into action. First, she personally prepares Santa's favorite breakfast, freshly squeezed orange juice along with a bowl of fresh fruit. Next comes the Eggs Benedict on an English muffin with a healthy serving of hollandaise sauce over the top with thick slices of Canadian bacon and home fries. Then cups of hot tea and that's it. After breakfast, Santa and his wife go for a nice long copter ride and Santa beams with pleasure as he sees everyone hard at work as he flies over his massive North Pole. Everyone waves at the Santa copter as it flies by and Santa returns the greeting. Rudolph is at the wheel of the helicopter. The clauses arrive back for a light lunch and then Santa decides to lie down for a short nap. But the short nap turns into a wonderful long slumber for Santa. Santa strolls to his favorite corner of the large Santa room. It is his family room and he calls Yelly and Hamish, his two dogs, to join him. Then he stretches out on his daybed and closes his eyes. 
Mrs. Claus washes contentedly as Samsoon drifts off into slumberland. And Yelly and Hamish lie in their spots beside Santa's bed, soon drifting off to sleep themselves. And at the end of the slumber, Santa wakes with a huge smile on his face. And he tells his wife that he now has everything figured out. They both smile at each other, and Santa lets out a loud ho, ho, ho. Mrs. Claus tells Santa that his long slumber was indeed a long slumber, and both agree that it was a great slumber. And this is how it was at this very moment. Part 2. Meeting of the Minds. The Dream Begins. Santa finds himself opening the door to a very bright lit room, brightly lit room. The door is of a bright yellow color and the white letters on this door boldly state, quote, private, unquote. Santa enters and several persons rise to greet him. He recognizes some of the faces of the group, but then again, he does not recognize others. Santa is a bit confused, but then again, he spots his brother, Sandy Claus, who beckons him to the head of the table. Santa walks to the head of the table, still a bit confused, and on his way to the head of the table, he sneaks a look at his surroundings. There is a huge globe of the world sitting on the table, at the head of the table, and on a large board just behind this, is written in large letters, We Demand World Peace. Santa stands beside his chair, waiting for someone to say something. Then Sandy Claus signals for him to sit, and the others follow. Soon, Santa learns what this is all about. As introductions are Santa realizes that there are several world leaders in the room, along with their aides. Santa tells himself that he is in very important company, but he's not very sure as to why he should be here. There are the presidents of the United States and France, the president of Russia and the chancellor of Germany, the prime ministers of the UK and Canada, Australia and New Zealand, the Emperor of Japan, and many others, including the Presidents of China and North Korea. Introduction is over, and Sandy Claus explains to Santa why Santa has been invited to this particular meeting. Sandy tells his brother that he was contacted by this group and asked to bring Santa to this meeting. The reason this group is calling on Santa to help bring peace to the world. For this forthcoming Christmas, the group truly believes that Santa would be the ideal person to help make this happen. He is the most popular man in the world. He is the most loved and admired and every generation, all generations, love him. Santa listens attentively and is really confused now. His Christmas missions have all been about giving toys and gifts to those in need around the world. Nothing ever like this. The message coming from each and every leader to Santa is that he is the only one who can save the world from itself and that the future of the kids can only be saved if Santa intervenes and it must be now. Santa is totally shocked, confused and bewildered. He shakes or sits there shaking his head in disbelief. 
and his brother Sandy draws his chair close to Santa and puts his arm around him. The two brothers begin to whisper as the rest of the room looks on. Everyone's eyes are fixed on the two Claus brothers. Part of Santa's disbelief is that he recently told Mrs. Claus of his desires to help bring peace to the world. So how did his desires reach the ears of this group? Hmm. The room is silent for a few minutes after this request is made. So silent that you could even hear a pin drop. Everyone is staring up at Santa and just wishing for him to speak. And in turn, Santa stares back at them. It is Sandy Claus who breaks the silence by clearing his throat. He tells the gathering that his brother Santa needs a bit of time to process all of this. Then Santa clears his throat and asks his brother Sandy to lead the discussion. A very intense conversation then ensues, and at the end of it all, Santa humbly agrees to help. Expressions of pure relief and excitement are on the faces of everyone in the room. A group then adjourns, or the meeting adjourns, with every world leader leaving separately in order to maintain top seat, and they leave with their keys in three minute intervals. It is agreed that no one must know that this meeting ever took place and arrangements have been made for brothers Santa and Sandy to be taken back to the North Pole in total secrecy. A security team takes charge and Santa and Sandy are taken through deserted corridors to a waiting plane with no marking and then flown back to the North Pole. Escorted by a group of fighter jets and neither Santa nor Sandy could tell which country these jets were from. And this is how it was at this very moment. Part 3 Santa follows plans. The dream continues. And as Santa continues to slumber peacefully in his favorite corner of his family room, Mrs. Claus watches as his expression changes from those of surprise and confusion, then to interest and deep thought, and then to the beginnings of excitement. She cannot wait for her beloved Santa to wake up and share it all with her. But in the meantime, Santa must be allowed to keep dreaming because she knows only too well, and so does Santa, that dreaming for Santa is probably is one of the most effective for him to develop and keep running his Christmas mission. And even the dogs, Yelly and Hamish, seem to agree, as they are both snugly curled up beside Santa's bed and sleeping deeply and peacefully along with their master. And as the dream continues, Santa and Sandy are back at the North Pole, having dinner with Mrs. Claus. They tell Mrs. Claus about their encounter, and she nods as they speak. And it is she that admits that she told Sandy about Santa's desires. And in turn, Sandy used his channels to do the rest. Now, Santa needs to use the documents that have been given to him by the world leaders to come up with the so-called road map. The plan has already been crafted and approved, and now, Santa needs to execute it. He needs to choose his special soldiers to help him 
And so he turns to his brother Sandy, his cousins Stefan and Stoyan, and his very trusted friends, Marco Sumner and Nicholas Gleason, who he has dubbed as the Mighty Magicians, as along with his other friends Chris Gringle and Josh Reisman. These two men have been his dearest friends for several years now, but Santa knows only too well that many more special soldiers will be needed. If this mammoth mission is to be successfully executed, those named here will be his chief lieutenants. But special soldiers are needed for field work. Special soldiers are needed to connect with special folks. And Santa needs to ensure that his elves and helpers are not overworked and spread too thin as they are already involved with this year's Christmas missions. So he decides to turn to his special kids who he adopted a few years ago and who continue to be a part of his community. Santa knows only too well how committed these kids are and how much they all understand the need to bring a bigger and brighter future to those who have similar backgrounds to theirs and to help better the future of kids worldwide. And as the dream continues, Santa realizes that those crafty world leaders knew exactly what they were asking him to help them do. Santa nods in his sleep and Mrs. Claus observes and smiles to herself. As she continues to read her book, she pats both Yelly and Hamish lightly on their heads and checks to make sure that they too are very much asleep. And then she resumes her position on a nearby sofa. And as the dream continues, Santa next finds himself calling a special meeting of his special kids, who received his request with much gusto. They are all excited. But at the same time, they are very much tentative. The world leaders have given Santa permission to share certain facts, but only with very trusted person, i.e. who else must be enlisted, where they are located, and the gifts that the world leaders will be presenting to the world. The kids are all in total disbelief, and after Santa swears them to total secrecy, the dream continues on. And this is how it was at this very moment. Part 4. Santa's Special Messengers. The dream picks up pace. And now Santa and his top team find themselves frantically engaged in trading the special kids. They are prepared for some very special and daring mission that will take them to some very far corners of the world. They will be the messengers to carry some very top secret messages. They will need to wear disguises, learn how to use some very specialized gadgets, learn how to communicate with those identified by the world leaders, learn how to avoid detection, and how to return safely from their missions. Santa is extremely concerned for his special kids. And as Mrs. Claus watches from her position on the nearby sofa, she notices that Santa's expression has changed to one of extreme concern. And she's almost tempted to wake him up. But she decides to let him sleep a wee bit longer. And she props herself on her elbow and looks on. 
her book almost slips out of her hand, but she grabs it just in time. For if it had fallen, it surely would have awakened Santa and Yelly and Hamish as well. She would later reflect, it was a very close call. As the dream continues, Santa has been given very specific instructions by the group of world leaders, and he knows that he needs to follow them to the very last detail. His messengers will travel far and wide in order to pass on specific instructions to very specific and special folks. And these folks are very well-trained folk who have been waiting for their instructions for some time now. Santa knows this as well, and as the dream continues, he and his team read and reread these instructions. And this is how it was at this very moment. Part 5. Santa communicates with special folks. And as Santa's dream progresses, his so-called lieutenants work diligently to develop the necessities. Invisible suits are designed and fitted to each kid. Kids and their gadgets or gadgets are fitted to go along. Books of instructions are put together and rigorous training takes place. There will be no room for error and everyone knows it. These missions will be dangerous and every kid has been given the option to withdraw from this project if they are either scared or not willing to take the risk. But Santa is pleased to see that no one has withdrawn and as Mrs. Claus observes, Santa's expression has once more changed but it has changed to one of extreme intensity with a slight smile on his face she is so glad that she is allowing her beloved santa to keep dreaming on and yelly and hamish are cooperating beautifully at one point yelly groans and stretches but then she returns to her slumber Hamish continues to snore softly and now as the dream continues the kids are ready for takeoff. Everything is ready and is as ready as can be. First, the kids will assemble at a deserted runway just inside the confines of the North Pole. Under the cover of darkness, next Rudolph and his team of reindeer will fly these kids to their special destinations along with their oversized backpacks. Before embarking or disembarking from the sea, each kid would put on their special invisible suits and there will be some other special Santa crafts carrying some very special folks who will make sure that Santa's special kids will be kept safe until their return to the North Pole. And as the dream continues, Santa's expressions continue to change. And at one point, Mrs. Claus notices that Santa is waving his hands. And it is at this point that she needs to spring into action. Yelly at some point wakes as Santa begins to wave his hand and in turn she wakens Hamish and Mrs. Claus is quick on the draw and she gets quickly to her feet and manages to grab Yelly while at the same time she texts the elf parlor which is close by and asks for some help. Two elves enter and she motions them to take Yelly and Kinch out of the family room as quickly as possible. 
and it is a good thing that both dogs are still a bit drowsy, or else they would have started to bark, thus waking Santa. Close call. Mrs. Claus prays that her hubby is still asleep, and he sure is. She decides to go and lie next to him and watches as his dream continues on. And now Santa is dreaming that his kids are ready to begin their mission. He is concerned, very concerned, but he has confidence in his kids and he knows that there are some very special folks awaiting their arrival. And this is how it was at this special moment. Part six, mom and papa, son and daughter. The dream takes shape. To the onlooker, she was just a regular mom driving her kids to school, then returning home to continue her daily household chores. She lived in Montreal, Canada, but she also had another life one that only she knew about. Santa's dream continues as this Montreal mom drops off her kids at school and on her way back to her car, a teenage kid approaches her. He smiles, greets her, and offers her a bag of brownies. He tells her that he is selling it to raise funds for his boy band. The Montreal mom takes the brownies and gives the kid a few dollars for his fundraising. Then she gets into her car and takes her time at opening the bag of brownies. She reaches in and there it is, a single sheet with some scribbled writing. She smiles to herself and then uses her iPhone to send a text. Her work is now complete. In a nearby field, Santa's land, rainbow and raindrop, graze peacefully. But they notice that the mom is in her car, reading and texting. They nod and their work is done. The magic word will quote, boy band. The teenage kid walks quickly away and almost gets knocked over. And as he crosses a busy Montreal street, he checks his iPhone and notices that he is on time. He dawdles a bit to admire his surroundings, then he saunters on for his next appointment. Not before he engages his invisible suit, Rainbow and Raindrop stay in the field for a bit, but not before. A little girl tries to play with them. They let the little girl do so, but after a few minutes, they manage to get away and scamper towards a hedge in order to get away. They are on their way to their next appointment. Min mission is accomplished, and the Montreal team, the Montreal network, they call themselves goes to work and the dream continues on with Santa dreaming and Mrs. Claus observing. Many miles away a proud papa is beaming at the birth of his first child, a bouncing baby boy. The proud papa lives in Princeton, New Jersey. He is sitting in his classroom correcting papers and waiting for his students to start trickling in, and he does not have to wait for too long. First, there is a slim young lady dressed in jeans and wearing a long-sleeved sweatshirt. She is followed by another young lady wearing track pants and an oversized sweater. They both nod at the teacher and at each other. Then they sit on opposite sides of the room. More students start coming in and taking their places. Then the young lady in the oversized sweater rises and approaches the teacher's table. 
She removes a folder and hands it to him. On the cover is written the words, quote, my term paper, quote. He looks up and for a brief moment he is confused. But then the confusion is replaced with a smile. The young lady returns to her seat, but leaves at the break. Her work is done. The teacher takes the folder and places it in his briefcase. And as he does so, he manages to send a text using his iPhone. And his job is done. The magic words were, quote, my term paper. The proud papa's text is received. And now the Princeton network is activated. At the break, the young lady in the oversized sweater walks briskly out of the building, but she is soon followed by the young lady in the long sleeved sweatshirt. And for a brief moment, she panics, but she soon gathers herself together. The young lady in the long sleeved sweatshirt walks by the young lady in the oversized sweater and then races to catch a bus on the street corner. The young lady in the oversized sweater breathes a sigh of relief and she soon disappears in the crowds on the sidewalk. She engages her invisible suit, she walks towards the corner coffee shop and her mission has been accomplished. In a park close by, Raindrop the Lamb observes. She notices what has happened and her job is now done. She leaps around and then disappears among a clump of bushes. Now she has to find her next field. And as the dream continues, Santa's expression is one of great excitement and Mrs. Claus watches and approves. In another corner of the world and on a crowded street corner of Riyadh in Saudi Arabia, a long-haired kid strolls along. He is looking for a particular little diner and seems to be having problems finding it. He hesitates and seems to be a bit lost. Soon, however, he spots what he is looking for and enters the diner. He approaches the counter and orders a pastry and a coffee. He pays for it and then slips a piece of yellow paper into the hands of the cashier. And the cashier tucks it among the dollar bills. He then takes a seat at a table close to the window and starts nibbling into the pastry and savoring it. He takes huge gulps of his coffee and smiles as he continues to eat and drink. The cashier appears to be very busy as there are other customers in the diner. He seems to be popular with the crowd, chatting and joking with several of them. And as the son of a well-known tailor who has a a shop at the top of the street. When he has a moment, the cashier looks at the piece of paper which has the words coffee and sweet pastry written on it. He crumbles the piece of paper and tosses it into a nearby garbage can. He disappears into the back of his little diner, pulls out his cell phone and sends a text. It is received with great gusto. The magic words are, quote, coffee and sweet pastry. The Saudi Arabian network has now been activated. The long-haired kid takes his time at enjoying his coffee and pastry. And after he's done, he rises and saunters out of the diner engaging his invisible suit as he saunters. He walks leisurely along and turns the street corner. Then he disappears into the crowd. His job is done. 
and now he must find his next location. He walks along and does not see something resembling a reindeer following him. The reindeer catches up with him and walks by. The long-haired kid follows and soon both kid and reindeer enter a deserted schoolyard. Both of their jobs are now over and Frosty, the reindeer, now needs to escort the long-haired kid to his next task. On a crowded street in Delhi, a sweet teenager is busy selling sweets in a crowded market, while close by her mom is selling all kinds of tea. Mom and daughter are doing great business today. Soon, a young lady enters the market and looks around. The young lady is dressed in a bright red sari and is carrying a shopping bag. She buys a few tins of chocolates and some boxes of cookies and she puts them in her shopping bag. She then heads towards the store where the kid and, the, and her mom are selling their sweets and tea. She stops in front of the kid, examines some of the sweets and then decides to buy some of them. The kid watches as the lady in the red sari takes some money out of her pocket to pay. She puts it in a small white envelope and hands it to the kid. The kid takes the envelope and opens it. She counts the notes and nods her head. The young lady in the red sari moves along. The kid has spotted something else in the envelope. It is a slip of red paper with the words, have a nice day, on it. She catches the eye of her mom and smiles, and her mom smiles in return. The kid rips the slip of paper and throws the pieces on the ground, while her mom takes her cell phone out of her pocket and pretends to be calling someone. In fact, she has just sent a text message. The magic words were, have a nice day. And now the Delhi network has been wakened up. The young, young lady in the red sari strolls leisurely out of the market and engages her invisible suit as she crosses a busy Delhi street. She heads to a nearby park and her job is done. She does not see standing at a nearby fountain, but she, the reindeer, notices her. Misty, the reindeer, finishes drinking from the fountain and follows the young lady in the red sari to a bench, where they both sit for a few minutes. Misty can see the young lady, despite this young lady, despite this young lady wearing an invisible suit. Misty's job is complete, and both reindeer and the lady in the red sari go there separately. And this is how it was at this very moment. Part 7. The uncle and the aunt, the niece and the nephew. And Santa keeps on dreaming. Boy, oh boy. You may think that Santa is having a very long dream, but no, this dream moves along so very quickly and Mrs. Claus is so very glad that her beloved Santa is getting time to have a lovely, nice snooze. She can hear Yelly and Hamish faintly in the background, playing with the elves outside in the fresh spring air. They appear to be playing with a ball, barking and running around. And as always, the elves have everything under control. 
I'm back to Santa's special super dream, which now moves to other corners of the world. And these episodes follow a similar path to the others previously dreamed of by Santa. The uncle in the gives a special visit from one of Santa's special kids. And the kid brings a small box of cookies to the uncle. And written on it is, Cookies for you, uncle. And this is the confirmation that the uncle needs so that he can send his text, which he does with a huge smile on his face. The Ukraine network is now much live. Santa's special kid almost gets caught by a Russian jet that circles over his head. But he engages his invisible suit and manages to escape, leaving the Russian pilot a bit shocked. His job is done. High above, Snow Cone the Snowbird sees everything, and his job is done. He circles once and flies away to his next meeting point. The kid walks along a dirt road and sees what he is looking for. A small car with the engine running. He takes his time approaching, and after checking for the driver, he enters and the car speeds away. And as Santa dreams on, he knows that the auntie in Afghanistan has also received a notification. One of Santa's kids brings her a brown package. She finds auntie in a small dirt cabin and auntie is eager to open the brown package after the young girl gives her a pen in a box. Auntie loves her new clothes. It is a bright orange dress. Auntie accepts the pen with a smile and sends her text as soon as the young girl departs. The magic symbol here was the giving of the pen. The young girl engages her invisible suit just in the nick of time as she sees a Taliban soldier walking towards her. They pass each other on the dirt path and of course the Taliban soldier does not see the young girl and she walks towards a small shop on the main road. She's not supposed to be outdoors as the Taliban has banned all females from being outside. Her job is done. High above Snowflake, Snow Cone's partner, watches and now her job is done. She flies off to safe quarters but she too almost gets caught as a little boy throws a stone at her but he misses his mark. And so it goes as Santa continues his super Christmas dream, while Mrs. Claus looks on, observing her beloved Santa's various expressions. And now it is off to North Korea, where Santa is aware of another of his kids spreading the word. This Santa's special kid strolls along a North Korean beach. He is dressed in shorts and a t-shirt, and he's obviously looking for someone in particular. He finds his man after searching, someone who is not much older than he himself. The giveaway is a smart-looking sun hat with the emblem of a large white swan on it. The kid approaches the young man wearing a sun hat and asks if the water is warm enough for him to have a swim. The young man looks up from his book and nods. 
Then the kid smiles and walks away. Both kid and young man have made contact. The young man is the nephew of a North Korean naval officer. The young man waits for the kid to disappear along the beach before he pulls out his cell phone and sends a text to his uncle. He then lights a cigarette and returns to his book. The magic words were, is the water warm enough? The North Korean network has now been activated. The kid engages his invisible suit in time to avoid some soldiers coming towards him. His job is now done as he jogs towards the jetty. Close by in the surf of the warm waves, Dolphin Sequin observes. And now his job is done as he ducks below the warm surf and swims away. On another sandy beach in Northern Ireland, a pretty young lady sits on a beach chair. She has long, dark hair. Close by, her little dog is playing in the sand. Soon, another young lady walks by with a map in her hand. The lady with the map approaches the other lady sitting on the beach chair. They exchange pleasantries and the one with the map points to a little town on the map and asks, quote, how far away is this? Quote, the one sitting in the beach chair gives instructions and the other with the map thanks her and walks away. The magic words were, how far away is this? The one sitting on the beach chair smiles to herself. Then she calls for her little dog playing on the sand. And he comes quickly. She picks up her beach bag, rummages around in it and finds her cell phone, sends her text, and the Northern Island Network has been activated. Now she's going to meet her auntie in a nearby seaside restaurant and they will discuss what has just taken place. Santa's special kid walks down the beach and enters the water. She spots a dolphin in the ocean frolicking around and her job is done. CJ the dolphin also spots the kid who she has been tracking and as she was walking down the beach and now her job is complete and this is how it was at this very moment in Santa's dream. Part 8. Now the world waits as Santa dreams on and Santa sure keeps dreaming on while events go on in various corners of the world. Santa continues to display various expressions on his face, from excitement to concern, and from satisfaction to contentment. Santa even nods his head from time to time, and Mrs. Claus sure sees all of this, and smiles to herself as she continues to hear the dogs playing with the elves outside. The brother in Beijing greets Santa's special kit and activates the Beijing network after receiving the confirming words. Then Santa's special kit safely leaves Beijing. And it is the same for the sister in Somalia, the boyfriend in Brazil, and the girlfriend in Greece, of course. Other corners of the world have been visited, contact made, confirmation completed, and finally Santa's special kids and those special messengers have all returned to home base. Mrs. Claus observes Santa's expressions with great satisfaction, and now she cannot wait for him to wake up and 
tell her everything, for one thing is for sure. Santa has always been very good at recalling his dreams to her, even to the point of being almost perfect, and she expects the same when he wakes up. In his continuing, Santa informs the world leaders, and they are extremely pleased. Now, they must come together one more time to wrap up this gigantic world mission, and they all know that it is not yet over. Several things can still go wrong, but they are all very optimistic. The objective now is for the world leaders to meet, and they need to do this in a very secret place with the maximum of security and secrecy. In his dream, or in Santa's dream, the world leaders are having a bit of difficulty on deciding where to meet. And after attending a top secret virtual meeting, it is Santa who steps in and makes a full proof suggestion, which the world leaders accept unanimously. And this is how it was at this very moment in Santa's dream. Part 9. Santa's World Summit. The dream assumes gigantic proportions. And as a super Christmas dream continues, Mrs. Claus is almost tempted to wake Santa up as she is simply dying to hear about his dream. So, she restrains herself and continues to watch over the big man. Not easy. Now, the world leaders need to be able to slip away for just a few hours to meet just one more time. But they need to do this without alerting the news media. Because if the news media were to uncover this tsunami-like event, everything would go wrong. And everything would be ruined. And all of these months of planning and agreeing and cooperating would be for naught. Millions of lives would also probably be in jeopardy as well. And those naysayers would do everything in their power, scuttle the entire initiative. So this time around, it is our beloved Santa who maps out a very tricky plan for the world leaders to follow. And now Santa's dream moves to his kitchen as in the late fall night he sits with Yelly and Hamish close by making sure that each world leader is going to be where he slash she is supposed to be. Santa has arranged for his invisible suits to be used by each world leader along with their trusted aid and that they are outfitted with those very high-powered gadgets, especially designed for this mammoth mission by Marco and Nicholas. Santa's highly trained kids and messenger are also on standby as well. And now everything is in place. The mass movement starts with certain world leaders taking a few days of unplanned vacation, while others take a few days of sick leave to deal with such things as the cold and the flu, and some minor injury, while others make up excuses for taking leave for a few days. It is meticulously planned that each leader would use which excuse and the cat is almost let out of the bag when one of the aides to one of the world leaders says that his boss is in good health but this is soon corrected when indeed when this particular world leader catches a cold so 
all continues on, and Santa continues to dream. Mrs. Claus continues to observe, and now she hears some of the elves moving around in their elf cafe. She sends a text to them to keep it down. As Santa is still asleep, especially once, Yelly and Hamish to be kept busy, so said and so done. As the elves take the dogs out again for a romp in the garden, and our Santa dreams on, and the various world leaders make their secret way to the secret hideaway. In Santa's secret sleeves for travel and everything. Mrs. Claus sees Santa smiling broadly and he lets out a loud ho, ho, ho because he is told now that a few of these world leaders are a bit hesitant to climb aboard his special sleeves, but she manages to stay put and to continue watching over her beloved Santa. Santa's well-trained reindeer, led by Rudolph, has everything in hand. All of the leaders follow directions as to how to find and board the special slaves. Things go without a hitch, and in Santa's dream, it is the day before Christmas Eve. And this is how it was at this very moment in Santa's dream. Part 10, the unimaginable global gifts. The dream goes way beyond the blue horizon. In his dream, all of the elves and helpers have piled all those unimaginable gifts on long tables in Santa's makeshift conference room. This is his continuing dream, and it is now Christmas Eve. And somewhere close by, in Santa's secret safety deposit box, the world leaders wait very anxiously for the sick dog. Santa has provided them with everything they need in order to stay safe and comfortable. And he has literally managed to pull off a coup in that no news outlet has managed to break a story. Santa was right when he decided to have the world leaders stay in his Santa's safety deposit box. Because according to updates, they are bonding well with presidents playing card games with prime ministers and eastern leaders teaching western leaders how to play chess and western leaders teaching eastern leaders how to play pool. According to Santa's so-called spies, the Santa safety deposit box is very much alive with lots of humor, jokes, and friendly banter. But the world leaders are very anxious for the signal to come so that they can get to the real business at hand and quickly return to their homes. And their aides have done a magical job in helping to keep everything running to plan. And as Santa dreams on, the gigantic pile of gifts is absolutely something to behold. And in his dream, Santa could only stand there and shed tears of joy. Mrs. Claus sees some tears trickling down Santa's cheek, and she's tempted to wipe them away. But she holds back for fear of waking him. There are gifts of all sizes and shapes, and each is wrapped in all colors imaginable. Each gift package has the following words written on them. To the world, from your respectful world leaders, we bring you peace, 
joy, happiness, and greetings on your beloved Santa Claus. Every box contains signed agreements by the world leaders on such things as ending wars around the world, dealing with climate change by the end of this decade, ending starvation and poverty, development of medical breakthroughs to deal with such things as cancer, diabetes, and Alzheimer's disease, along with other disabling diseases. Taking care of the oceans and protecting wildlife, promoting a green earth, protecting human rights, and the rights of the vulnerable and the disabled. Banning the use of guns, agreeing to help kids have a better life without any hindrance, the banning of crime and violence in movies, a firm agreement to have no more bombs, missiles, or any sort of war-type equipment or anything else, a ban on terrorism, and there is a lot, lot more. Santa is beside himself as he inspects the huge pile of gifts from the world leaders. And in his dream, he lets out another ho, ho, ho. And Mrs. Claus smiles with glee. She's taken off guard by his loud ho, ho, ho. Even the elves in their elf cafe hear him. Mrs. Claus sends a text to the elf cafe to let the elves know that Santa is still asleep, but having a happy dream, and asks them to remain quiet for just a bit longer, and to keep Yelly and Hamish busy as well. And now Santa's dream is coming to an end, as the final chapter is about to play out. And this is how it was at this very moment in Santa's super Christmas dream. Part 11. Visitors to the North Pole. If only this dream was true. And now the world leaders have been given the signal to be quiet as the final chapter is about to be played out. They all return to their seats and their attention is drawn to the large monitors that have been set up around the room. Santa appears on the screen along with Sandy Claus and Santa's Stefan and Stoyan, his cousins, and Mrs. Claus. And Marco and Nicholas are also there along with Chris Kringle and Josh Reese. And as the dream gallops to an end, Santa clears his throat and begins. Of course, Mrs. Claus does not know what Santa is saying because it is still a dream. But she hears him clear his throat. All of the major news media outlets are present as Santa announces the most unexpected news. It's a big hot makes his announcement. And not even the greatest of naysayers is able to respond. In short, Santa tells the assembled group that on behalf of all world leaders, he is pleased to announce that a mammoth agreement has been reached to bring peace, joy, and happiness to the world. He then flips his switch and two things take place simultaneously. First, there's Michael Jackson's song, Quote, someday at Christmas, unquote. And this booms around the room. And at the same time, the world leaders appear via video link from Santa's safety deposit box. And they are smiling, waving, and saluting. Then at a behind the scenes signal, they raise their glasses in unison. And in one shout, they emit, quote, 
Here is to the world! Exclamation. Unquote. Then they toast the world, each other, and Santa. And Santa leads the hip, hip, hooray, cheer. And as Santa dreams on, mayhem breaks out among the news media folks. They are absolutely shocked, confused, and falling over each other, and shouting questions at a beaming Santa. But Santa only points to the long, large tables loaded with gifts from the world leaders, and he invites the news media to have a look. The news media naturally fall over each other as they circle the long, large tables, reading the tags, taking pictures, and exclaiming to each other. Then, everything goes dark, and Santa is finally awake. The dream is over, and Santa yawns and stretches. He rubs his eyes and clears his head to shake his mind. He wants to clear his mind. Yes, it's himself. But it was only just a dream. He sees Mrs. Claus sitting beside him, and he is ready to tell her everything. And this is how it was at this very special moment that Santa has wakened up. Part 12. A Christmas to the world, a dream, but what if? Santa takes his time at fully waking up, and when he does, he and Mrs. Claus adjourn to their large kitchen. They share cups of tea and some warmly baked apple and lemon tarts that the staff has just finished baking. It's only mid-afternoon. Soon, Yelly and Hamish come running in, and Santa and Mrs. Claus greet them. Now, Santa begins to tell his wife about his fantastic dream and his final comments to her as she sits open-mouthed. Or, what if all this were all true? What if this were truly a Christmas morning gift? To the world, the end. I hope you enjoyed this particular episode and keep enjoying your holidays and see you for my next episode. Ho, ho, ho.